Hi everyone, welcome to AI Product Builders where we dive into the world of generative AI. Today we are unveiling something truly exciting, a step-by-step -step tutorial on building your own chat PDF, which we have lov lovingly named document. First, I'll walk you through how drag works and crucial concepts around it. And then I'll walk you through the entire code base. And the last part is bonus, where I'll show you how you can deploy the app on Streamlit so it can be shared with the public. Yeah. So this is what we have built today, Document Genie. Get instant insights from your document. This is basically a chatbot built using Rack Framework, leveraging Generative AI model Gemini Pro. It basically processes your PDF documents by breaking down into manageable chunks, creating a searchable vector store, and you know generating accurate answers to your queries. How it works is basically you have to enter your Google API key, upload your document on on the sidebar and ask a question about the, any document you have. Let's start by doing this. So to obtain your Google API key, you have to just click on this link. So you'll end up on Google AI Studio and you cre can create your API co key over here. Just copy paste your API key and save it in a very safe place. Enter your API key, click enter and then browse any file you wish to so I'm, I'm using a file called ai tools so this file basically has a lot of information how to use ai tools this is the guide i've created by myself for example how to use canva ai how to use notion ai and some other ai tools so i'll be uploading this document and click on submit and process so once the document is processed it gives you a a validation clue saying done and now ask a question related to document so i'll be asking for example how to use canva ai yes so it gave me a very concise answer whatever is in the document so that's the advantage of rag framework right the retrieved information is presented to the llm as an additional context along with the prompt this allows the llm to you know, access relevant facts and relationships while generating the response. So feel free to ask if you have any questions about specific apps, aspects or applications. Now that we are done how, um, looking at how the app works, let's jump into the code. First, let's understand why are we importing so many libraries, right? For that to understand, you have to understand what is Drag Framework. Um, and how it works. So Rack is a very important concept to understanding and for building LLM based applications. So as you've seen, most of the time LLMs hallucinate and Rack helps avoid that hallucination and ensure that LLMs doesn't make up any facts. LLMs are usually trained on a data set and are not updated frequently. So Rack allows us to access those knowledge that LLMs might not have been trained on. And it also has domain specific expertise. For example, enterprises have proprietary data and RAC can adapt to that specific areas by using relevant knowledge based databases. Most of the time, you're unsure how LLMs are generating the answers, right? And RAC helps you to understand how the LLMs arrived at a particular answer by re referencing retrieved sources. So, in a nutshell, a retrieval augmented generation is a way to boost the capabilities of LLMs by combining them with external knowledge databases. Essentially, it teaches LLMs to find real relevant information outside their limited memory before generating an answer. So let's understand how it works. It basically consists of three parts, retrieval, augmentation, and generation. In the retrieval part, the user asks a question or prompts the LLM. And RAC searches an external database like documents, databases, or the APIs for related information. This could be anything from articles to product manuals or any historical records. And then there comes the argumentation part. This retrieved information is used to enrich the prompt given to the LLM. This is something called context. And then this adds factual context and helps the LLM understand the question better. And then there's the generation part, the LLM armed with the prompt and the context generates its response. This response should be more accurate, factual and relevant to the question than without the retrieved information. So, so retriever is basically acts like a search engine, sources all the no external knowledge database, Wikipedia company documents using something called semantic search. It understands the user questions and retrieves relevant passages. And then the LLM itself, it could be GPT-3, 4 or Gemini models it takes the user prompt 
along with the retrieval information as context and generates the final response. So let's also understand what are embeddings, right? Usually machines do not understand text, they only understand numbers. Both the user query and the documents in the knowledge database are converted into mathematical representation called embeddings. Imagine each text piece in a point in a high dimensional vector space and then you know these vector databases find similar text which lie closer. And then we store the embeddings in the vector databases. The retrieval has efficient algorithms to find document whose embeddings are closest to the query's embeddings and this ensures the retrieved information, the context aligns with the user intent. So that's how RAG works. I've included each of the, you know, libraries which we would be using, for example. Um, so the documents, to read a PDF, we are using PyPDF and we chunk the PDF. So we are using a library called Recursive Character Text Splitter. It's provided by Langchain. And then we convert the text into embeddings and we are using a library called Google Generative AI Embeddings. And then those embeddings are saved in a vector database. So basically, Langchain provides some prompt templates and that's what we are using here. And then to generate the response, we are using chat Google Generative AI. You could use any model over here, Gemini Pro, Gemini Ultra. So this is my GitHub profile. Basically, you have um, four files for this application. License, it's a standard MIT license. And then you have readme section giving a brief overview of how the app works and the requirements.txt where you have all the libraries and, you know, the actual code for the application. And to build an application, we'll be using Langchain. Langchain is a framework designed to facilitate the development of application using large language models. It aims to make it easier to build complex applications that involve processing, understanding, and generating human-like text. Uh, to make this possible, we have to uh, import several libraries. I ex already explained what libraries we require for this. So let me start uh, by importing them. I've already installed all the libraries. Let's dive into the code. Our first step is setting up our Streamlit page. As I've already explained, we'll be using Streamlit to deploy our app and also to build a web interface. Uh, what is Streamlit? Streamlit is an open source Python library that enables developers to create beautiful interactive web applications just using Python. So let's start setting up the page. We can set it up using st.set page config. We can set up the page title document genie may what is why so we set up um, the page title document genie i have selected the layout as wide and we can also have something called markdown text so basically describing what your app does so we'll use st.markdown streamlit for example let's say what the document does so this section includes a brief markdown on how the document GD works. We and then we start setting up our API keys. There are two ways how you can, um, you know, build this application using the API key. You can enter your API key and uh, save it as an environment variable. But here I, I would be asking the user to enter their API key so that the cost is incurred by the user and not me. So let's start by saying API key ask the user to input thing as text input in the google api key right equal to password key is api key input so here we are prompting user to enter their api key next we have our core function we'll start with get pdf text what basically does is it reads and extract text from uploaded PDF. So let's get started. We have text docs. Example, let's say text, initialize the text, and then say write a for loop for PDF in PDF docs, PDF reader, pages, append the text, and the text. Don't forget the indentation. And the next step is to, you know, write a function for extracting the chunks from the documents. So what it, this does is basically splits the documents into manageable chunks for processing the embeddings. So we'll start by writing get text chunks. 
So we'll use something called X splitter. And we have to use the library by Langchain, which is recursive character splitter. And we'll keep the chunk size to 100,000 on the widget on the chunks. So what are we doing here? We are splitting um, the document so using text splitter, or re recursive character text splitter, keeping the chunk size to 1,000 and overlap to 1,000. And then we split the text. And once we have the text chain, we have to convert this into embeddings and store this in vector database. So we'll start defining a function called get vector. So we have your text chunks, PI key. So what do we have in this particular function is basically we are taking text chunks and API key as parameters. And then first we convert this text chunk using embeddings. So we are using Google Generative AI embeddings over here. Um, and then once we have the embeddings, we store in a vector database. So face is the library over here. So we pass in the text chunks and the embeddings. So for now, we will be storing the vector database in the local storage. Uh, so we are done with reading our document, extracting the information out of it, converting them into text chunks and converting those texts into embeddings and all storing in the vector database. And now we have to um you know get the uh, pass the information to LLM. so this is where the real magic happens so we write the function called def get conversation chain so we have to mention the prompt template here so we are using prompt template from long chain again so we have to pass over the prompt here for example i would say so we'll enter the prompt saying here answer the question as the detailed as possible um, from the provided context and we can say make sure to provide all the details so we could also instruct the llm saying if the answer is not available in the answer don't provide the wrong answer so that's basically it and we'll pass over the context we pass it in a new line and we pass over the answer so this is the instruction to the prompt template and then we have to specify the model and the model we'll be using over here is gemini pro you could use anything specific to yours and then we say prompt use the prompt template and play I'll just call true input variable the input variable will be context the prompt we are providing is answer, answer the question as detailed as possible pro, for, from the provided context we are also instructing the llm saying that do not provide an answer if you're not if you're unsure and then we have to pass over the model so i'm um, using chat google generative ai the model here i'm using is gemini pro i'm also setting up the temperature you could Set the temperature as per your wish and also passing over the Google API key. As we set the prompt template, we have to, have to pass in the input variable that is basically the context and the question provided by the user. And then we are using a function uh, load QA chain, basically question and answering. Now that we are done with the conversational chain, we have to write a function to process the user question, search with most relevant documents based on the question and generate a response using the conversation AI chain. So let's begin by defining the function. For example, the function would be taking two inputs, which is the user question and the API key. And we have to get the embeddings and the user question. So let me start explaining this part of the code very clearly. So the user input is taking two parameters, the user question and the API key. So this function purpose is to basically um, process the user question, search for the most relevant question and generate a response using the conversational AI chain, which I mentioned before. And then we are, you know, the embeddings part here is where we convert the text into numerical representation that captures the semantic uh, understanding of the words. The particular model we are using is it's already the embedding model uh, pre-built by Google. And then we load the face index. This index basically contains all the embeddings and the document chunks, which we processed earlier. And then we do the similarity search. This line performs a similarity search in the face index for the embeddings corresponding to the user question. The search returns document chunks that are most similar. This function basically retrieves a conversational chain, which is a sequence of processing steps defined by the input documents. We are using Gemini Pro over here. You could use any model here. 
and then we generate the response and at last we are displaying the information the generated response is displayed in the streamlit application uh, this allows the user to see the answer to the question directly in the web interface now let's start building the ui interface for streamlit streamlit you we start by defining the header define main the document or file with form. So in this part of code, we define the main function is also for the Streamlit UI interface. As you see in the interface, we have two input functions where they enter the Google API key, which we already defined above, but we also have something called ask a question from the PDF file. So we also have drag and drop files here. So we have to have all this information in the Streamlit UI. So we begin by setting the header and we ask the user to ask a question and so on the sidebar section we have uh, something called file uploader so this is where the user uploads the file and we have st.spinner basically this is giving a visual glow for the user that their documents have been processed and we use um, all the necessary functions which i mentioned about getting the text chunks and storing them in the vector data pressing processing them. and we show finally a success message saying done and i think that's the end of the code so we build the entire application in just 89 minutes. So I hope this application provides a deeper understanding of how RAG works. Now that you've seen how the application works and written the code, you can also deploy this app on Streamlit Community Cloud. So you have this beautiful portfolio project built, but uh, you would like to show this in, on your resume or you know to share it with your friends or potential employers you can go and host it on streamlit community cloud so that it's accessible by everyone and everyone can use it uh, so in order to deploy your app on streamlit uh, just head over to streamlit create an account and once you end up on this dashboard you have to click on new app and paste the github url over here so this is my GitHub URL, just paste it. And you can also um, edit this domain if you wish to say deploy. Thank you everyone for watching the video. If you would like to see more such tutorials, please do subscribe. I'll have the link to the GitHub repository so you can go through the entire code base. Thank you so much.